The New Testament story of Christ's birth is beautiful and descriptive and has been told for millennia. What a majority of the Christian world doesn't recognize is that the Christ child story goes far beyond the events that occurred in Bethlehem. Another testament of Jesus Christ tells the perspective of believers that lived on the other side of the world, the Americas. Their story that we will tell here tonight begins five years before that blessed night. Arrows and stones pierced the evening air as a crowd of Nephites yelled in fury at the Lamanite prophet. Samuel had spent the day calling the Nephite people to repentance and testifying of the coming of the Savior into the world, proclaiming, Nothing can save this people, save it be repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, who surely shall come into the world and shall suffer many things and shall be slain for his people. Samuel continued, Behold, I give unto you a sign, for five more years cometh, and behold, then cometh the Son of God, to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. For behold, there shall be great lights in heaven, insomuch that in the night before he cometh there shall be no darkness. And behold, there shall a new star arise, such as one ye never have beheld. Despite the glad tidings that Samuel bore to the Nephites, there were those who wanted him dead for calling them to repentance. Yet, the Spirit of the Lord was with him, insomuch that they could not hit him with their stones, neither with their arrows. The people had been prepared, and Samuel had accomplished his mission. He departed, never to be seen again. Samuel the Lamanite was not the only one called to prophesy of the coming Messiah. Hundreds of years earlier, and on the other side of the world, the prophet Isaiah wrote, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Thou hope and deliverer promised of old, on whom we have waited ere long. Oh, come and redeem us from slavery's yoke, and deliver thy people home. Yes, thou in whose presence our soul takes delight, on whom in affliction we call, our comfort by day and our song in the Four years after Samuel's appearance to the Nephites, a young virgin in Jerusalem trembled at the sight of a singularly bright figure standing before her. Fear not, Mary, said the heavenly messenger, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Stunned by the words of the angel, a confused Mary replied, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? 
Gleaming with light, the angel responded, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Faithfully, Mary favored the messenger with the words, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Back in the Americas, persecution for those Nephites who believed in the words of Samuel continued to grow. The unbelievers joyfully mocked them, saying, Behold, the time is past, and the words of Samuel are not fulfilled. Therefore your joy and your faith concerning this thing hath been in vain. But the believers did watch steadfastly for that day and that night and that day, which should be as one day that they might know that their faith had not been in vain. Now it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers that all those who believed in those traditions should be put to death, except the sign should come to pass. With the prospect of death before them, those who remained believers waited in terrible anticipation for the sign of the birth of Christ. Dust filled the air in the crowded streets of Bethlehem as Mary, full with child, and her faithful husband Joseph frantically moved from inn to inn, seeking a place for Mary to rest and give birth to her divine child. Initially, Joseph had been distraught at the prospect of his future bride being great with child. The culture of the time called for the public shaming of any woman who conceived outside of marriage. But Joseph, a just man, refused to shame her and was rewarded with an angelic visitation confirming to him that she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Joseph and Mary were espoused and now found themselves desperately unprepared to receive the heavenly gift which God had entrusted them. Eventually, they found relative safety in a cave meant for animals. The day had arrived, come nightfall, if the sign were not given, the believing Nephite men, women, and children would perish. The wicked prepared for the massacre, and the believers anxiously prayed in anticipation for the setting sun. One of those believing members was a man named Nephi, who saw the wickedness of his people and his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. And it came to pass that he went out and bowed himself down upon the earth and cried mightily unto the Lord all that day. Lord, please hear our Nephite's prayer, I humbly plead with thee. For we have sought the signs of old, the signs that Samuel foretold. Lord, please let us see. A star in the east, a night without dark, a sweet divine baby. These are the things that you promised us. Lord, we trust in Thee. Lift up your head and be of good cheer. Behold, the time is at hand. A virgin conceived, a gift received. I will be born in a distant land. A star in the east, a night without dark, a sweet divine baby. These are the things that I promised you, and thus it shall be. The sun dipped below the horizon, yet there was no dark. The sign had been given, a new star in the east, a savior born, and those who would not believe fell to their knees in terrible amazement, while those who did believe fell on their knees in gratitude.
in a cool stable, light danced on rough stone, as the sweet cries of a newborn filled the air. Joseph marveled at the babe's gentle strength, as his new child wrapped his hand around his earthly father's finger. That night, the long-awaited Messiah slept on the breast of a chosen woman. Humble beginnings for a king, for the Son of God. In a field not far from the sacred scene, a group of shepherds were startled by the appearance of a heavenly messenger. Fear not, the angel said, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel 
a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And as it was written, Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Until at the age of 30, the carpenter turned rabbi called out to a few poor fishermen, saying, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And fishers of men they became, traveling from city to city, learning at the feet of the master teacher. For he truly did heal the sick, and the dead he raised. He broke every tradition, and everywhere he went, he made disciples as well as adversaries. He wept, he laughed, he rebuked and he loved. And as it was prophesied by them of old, he would only conquer death by facing it. Drops of divine blood fell on gentle blades of grass as the Chosen One humbly submitted to his agonizing destiny. O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And drink it he did, betrayed, arrested, mocked, denied, and eventually scourged and sentenced to death. On a hill outside of the city wall, nails were driven through the same hands that once wrapped around the finger of his loving father, who could only provide a meager cave for shelter. And the breast that once gave rest to the head of the Christ child heaved in agony with the sobs of a mother witnessing the unjust death of her son. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Thirty-three years earlier, it was a woman named Mary who had welcomed the Christ child into the world. And on the third day after his crucifixion, it was yet again another woman named Mary who would welcome the resurrected Christ back to the world. Not only did he save the believing Nephites from a terrible death, he conquered both spiritual and physical death for the whole human race. Israel had been redeemed, and it was Jesus of Nazareth who had been its redeemer.
This season, may we never forget that there would be no Christmas without Easter, for it is Christ's death and resurrection that makes his birth worth celebrating. May we always remember to call him by his name, Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And may we never cease to proclaim joy to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Saints and angels sing, and saints and saints and angels sing. Rejoice, rejoice when Jesus reigns, and saints their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Rejoice, rejoice in the Most High, while Israel spreads abroad like stars that gleam. God and ever worship God and ever and ever worship God ever and ever worship God What's up guys, just finished editing the video that you just watched. I hope it was worth it. We put a lot of time and effort into it. Huge thank you to all of the artists that participated. And all we ask of you is to share it. Share it with some of your friends, your family members, ask them to share it. And together we can show the whole world why the Book of Mormon and the New Testament together bring the most powerful Christmas story of all. So we love you guys and we hope you have an amazing Christmas season. to the world the Lord is come